In the last video, we briefly reviewed how to balance equations uh, so that the equation can actually follow the law of conservation of mass, which means that mass of reactants is equal to mass of products. Um, and to show that in a reaction, you have to make sure that your atoms balance out on both sides, on the reactant side and on the product side. So if you have two hydrogens on the reactant side, well, you should also have two on the product side. And if you don't you need to balance the equation using coefficients, you cannot change the small numbers, the subscripts, because that changes the overall compound. So we did the first two examples in the previous video, and then we just started the third example, ran out of time. So we're going to restart the third example over here, um, because this one's a bit of an interesting uh, one. I'm going to show you a trick to make this a bit simpler for you to solve. Uh, so here we have a combustion reaction. It's complete combustion. I know that because there's only carbon dioxide and water produced. Um, there's no carbon monoxide and there's no soot. Uh, so let's start by counting our atoms. You always start off by counting first because sometimes your equation might already be balanced and you don't have much work to do if you figure that out right away. Uh, so here we have, uh, let's start off with our carbons. On the left side, we have two carbons. On the right side, we have one carbon. Let's go and count our oxygens next because that's the order in which we need to balance. We do our uh, metals, ions, and then our non-metals, and then our oxygens and hydrogens. So oxygen over here, uh, we have two on the left side. Now be careful with the oxygens on the right side. You have two in carbon dioxide, but you also have one in water. So that's a total of uh, three oxygens on the right side. Uh, and then we'll go and we'll balance and we'll uh, count our H's. So for our H, we have um, six on the left side, and then just two on the right side. So let's start off by balancing our non-metal, our carbon. We have two on the uh, left side, one on the right side. So we'll put a two in front of carbon dioxide. Um, and let's go and change things right away. So once we do that, we now have two carbons. So carbon is balanced. Great. Um, our oxygen, that number will change too. We now have two times two, that's four, plus the one that we had over here. So now we have five oxygens. And our H's, they're, they're fine. Um, now, I usually say to go for oxygen next, but that's a bit tricky to do. If you'll notice you have two oxygens on the left side and five on the uh, right side. And so I can't think of a whole number that I could put here in front of the oxygen to get five. I mean, the only number I could put is a fraction, 2.5, but fractions aren't allowed. So um, right now, I'm gonna skip oxygen and just go to hydrogen because I'm having a bit of a hard time with that. So hydrogen, it says that there's uh, six hydrogens on the left side um, and two on the right. So to balance that, I'll just put a three in front of water and that gives me six hydrogens. And now I have to change my amount of oxygen again so I had two times two over here, that's four, plus three, so it's seven now. So my carbons are balanced and my hydrogens are balanced, but I'm still having trouble with this oxygen. I don't know what number to put in front of this oxygen to get a seven. Um, that number is going to be multiplied by two to get seven. And the only thing I can think of is um, 3.5. Now if I put 3.5, that works because 3.5 times two is seven. And I guess that that's a balanced equation. The problem is though, I can't really have fractions. Um, I have to have whole numbers as my coefficients. So you can start off by putting a fraction, a decimal number that will solve this issue for you. Um, but what you need to do is modify this at the end, get rid of the fraction, make it a whole number. To do that, you can multiply the entire equation all the coefficients, not subscripts, but coefficients by two. So if you do that, you end up with two C two H six, because that coefficient is multiplied by two, you get a coefficient of one there, plus 3.5 times two is seven, 702. And that's gonna produce two times two is four CO twos. plus six H2Os, because three times two is six. And then you can go back and count. Two times two carbons, that's four carbons on the left side. On the right side, four times one, 
that's four carbons on the right side, that's balanced. Oxygens, seven times two is 14. On the left side, on the right side, we have four times two, which is eight. And then six times one is six. So six plus eight, that's 14. So our oxygens are balanced. And let's keep our fingers crossed for the H's here. Two times six is 12 on the left side. On the right side, we have six times two, which is also 12. So now we have the same number of atoms on both sides and the same of each type on both sides. Four carbons, four carbons, 14 oxygens, 14 oxygens, 12 hydrogens, 12 hydrogens. And now we have a completely balanced equation. You could have balanced this without doing this little um, fraction method here and multiplying it out. Um, you, it might have taken you a long time to do. You would have just had to um, do some trial and error back and forth until it was completely solved. Um, and some, some of you might have done it very quickly if, you're, if math is very intuitive to you. Um, but if it takes you too long, you can always try this fraction method. You'll see it usually um, when it comes to um, certain combustion reaction types. Um, so you basically balance everything but the oxygen, and at the end you put a fraction that when it multiplies by 2 because of the O2 there, it will give you a whole number, um, and then you leave your fraction there. Don't make that your final answer. What you need to do is multiply by 2 to get rid of the decimal number, and so that's what we did here. Um, keep in mind that some of these balancing um, problems will have more than one answer, uh, but what you need to do is you need to provide the simplest ratio. Um, so I'm quickly going to show you what I mean by that. So let's erase this. And we'll go to the top and just show you a simple example of what I mean by the simplest ratio. So we already balanced this one in the previous video. But let's balance it again. So let's say, uh, for example, I put a 4 here. So that would be 8 H's. I'd have to put a 4 here. 8 H's, um, and that would be um, 4 oxygen, so I have to put a 2 here. So this is balanced. If you count this, balance on both sides. But you'll notice that this is not the simplest ratio. Kind of like when you had ionic compounds, if you had Mg2O2, you had to reduce. You had to divide by 2 to get MgO. So in a balanced equation, check to make sure um, that you, don't, you can't reduce anymore. Here you can reduce. You can divide this by 2, divide this by 2, divide this by 2, and then you'll get 2H2 plus 2O2 producing, uh, sorry, 1, because you divide by 2, 1O2, um, producing 2H2Os. And that would be the simplest ratio of coefficients. So your coefficients, they can change. You can reduce them. You can multiply them. You want to provide the simplest ratio and make sure that the coefficients are whole numbers, not fraction numbers. Remember, when balancing, you cannot change the subscripts, the small numbers. Otherwise, you've changed the compounds. Those subscripts are determined by the formula rules that we learned about um, prior to entering the balanced equation portion of the unit. So what you should do is practice the problems on the uh, next page. And like I said, you can also uh, search up other videos for balancing equations and other practice problems just by going on to Google um, and researching balancing equation worksheets. And most times they'll even have the answers associated with them. So do as much practice um, as you can and as you need to do to become comfortable with this. The more you do, the quicker you're going to be at solving these problems on tests and quizzes.